Welcome back. In part one, we looked at Jeremy's uh, career, early life from a small town all the way to Blackpool to Lancaster to utilities all the way to MCOR and then 15 years with MCOR around it, all the journey for 25 years, how FM evolved and how Jeremy evolved. And we finally came to know about the three things that Jeremy, not many people know about Jeremy. So let's just go to part two and get to know even more about Jeremy. Jeremy, talk us through your hobbies and interests. Yeah, okay. So uh, hobbies and, and, and interests. I, I I mentioned before I like music, Basker. Mm -hmm. So so one of my hobbies is is vinyl record collecting. Now I, I know it's it's become quite fashionable of recent, and you know vinyl sales. I think last year tipped uh, CD sales for the first time in in what was it 20, 20 something years. Yeah, I've I've always continued to buy vinyl records, and 10, 15 years ago you could pick up records for like pennies. Now now they're in the hundreds of pounds in some cases for collectible pieces. So I love music. I love reading about music. I love reading about bands. I find it again, as I said before, it's quite therapeutic for me. It takes mm -hmm. me away from the the, the work they do. Um, I I also I sort of like like cooking. Uh, I really enjoy you know entertaining folks at home with my wife and. But I spend a lot of time uh, with my children. So my, my youngest son in particular has been very, very keen on rugby. Uh, rugby union wasn't my particular sport as a boy by any means. Um, it's definitely not hard enough to play that kind of game. But it's taken my wife and I on, on, on a really wonderful journey for the last sort of 10 years watching him play all around the country. And my wife's taken up photography. So that's given us a new hobby as well that we share together. Uh, I'm particularly poor at it, but I, I'm the facilitator. I've learned so much more about cameras and pictures and taking pictures and editing them. So we spend a lot of time doing that together. So as a family, we spend time together doing stuff like that. family, different passions, and uh, at the same time, music. So let's just go back and uh, and talk about that. So I, I know you are, a, you are a big fan of cooking, Jeremy. If you could just eat three foods for the rest of your life, what three foods would you eat? Just that's, that's a hard question, Basket, because do you know, when I was younger, uh, my mum took me to the doctor when I was about 14. Um, basically saying he just doesn't eat at all he'll eat his beans mars bars and yogurts and i would only eat yogurts if there was no fruity bits in them because i was extraordinarily fussy i must have been awful for my mum back then uh, and and then I, I started to 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 go out with a girl whose mum was a chef which is where i started to get a bit of a passion about this who introduced me to all kinds of foods and by the time i was 19 i, I adored everything apart from raw onions so in answer to your question what three foods would I like? Well, number one, oysters. Okay. I love oysters. And, and, and I didn't realise there's a whole oyster farming community around the United Kingdom that goes from season to season with different types of oysters. Mm -hmm. So number one would definitely be oysters. Uh, number two would probably be for me, um, well, probably salmon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then number three, I, I would, put, I would have to have a good curry in there somewhere okay. without, without any doubt. I mean, well, well, I don't care what it would be. It would have to be, you know, a good a good curry in there. So, so oysters, salmon, and a good curry. All day, all day, every day. Sounds about right to me. Yeah. So uh, if we make your life as a movie, what movie star would you like to play and what could be the title of your movie? So what movie, what movie, would, movie star would I like to play me? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, my, my childhood hero was Clint Eastwood, but uh, you know, Clint Eastwood's six foot two or three, isn't he? And, I, and I'm five foot seven, so that wouldn't work very well. So may, 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 maybe Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise, nice. And what could be the title of the movie? Um, oh, what, what a good quote. The title of the movie about my life. Um, <laughs> just an ordinary, an, an ordinary guy trying to make sense of it all. Yeah, an, an ordinary guy trying to make sense of it. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of think that's that. I, I kind of feel that's where I've always been. I'm, I, I realise, you know, people say, where are we going? 
you know, where, where we come from. Well, the reality is we're hurtling around a giant ball of fire at mm. 60 plus thousand kilometers an hour mm. on an elliptical orbit, and we've been doing it for, for decades. That's the reality, isn't it? So trying to make sense of our lives, I think, is, is kind of like that broader, deeper thinking that I like to do. What's it all about? And how could we, as a society, as people, be better together, mm. share inspiration, have you know, break bread together, be friendly together. I know it's a bit philosophical, but I can look at the geopolitical nightmare that's taking place over in, 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 in Russia and Ukraine. And I'm not qualified to talk about the politics in relation to that. But I think about all the folks that are being made homeless and all, all the rich culture that's being destroyed. And I question why. Mm. And I think to myself, surely we can all find a better way. So, yeah, an, an, ordinary, an ordinary guy trying to make sense of it all. Perfect. From now on, we are going to go into the random rapid fire. You just got a teaser now. So nothing right, nothing wrong. Whatever comes in your mind, quick and fast. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So if you could make a dinner, a very special dinner for three people that you could invite from the history, from your family, anybody, who would you invite and what food would you cook for them? Ah, that's, that's pretty easy. I would invite... Uh, two of my well, I invite four of four of my good friends, uh, Ian and, and Sharon Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, I would invite uh, and and John and Vanessa Wainwright. What food would I cook for them? Definitely uh, Lebanese. Lebanese. Uh, and I'll tell you, what, I, I would do things like tabouleh, uh, Lebanese rice with vermicelli. Uh, I would do um, probably baba ganoush. I would do souvlaki, so kebab. Uh, both probably pork and, and lamb and beef and I'll barbecue those so they're really charcoal and I have a huge big salad with them so nice and simple and we do probably Lebanese flatbread in that and I probably would do something like a paneer maybe with spinach that kind of thing as well so a nice we like we like family dining so literally you know sure two and sure together and we drink some really good Lebanese cabernet and so nice if there is any leftover, you know where I live. No, please <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I mean, absolutely, that kind of thing. Really, I really love that. Just getting around the table, talking about just general things in life, and sharing some food together. It's brilliant. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And obviously, you know, you have been cooking, or you know, it's your kitchen, your food. Do you have any memorable kitchen fail? Something that went totally wrong? Yeah, I, I, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at dessert. <laughs> I mean, I mean, catastrophically bad. My mum was brilliant at baking, you know, and I learned so much from her, but, but I, I cannot cook, cannot bake at all. Mm. So I was making some, uh, some, I think, vanilla and chocolate cheesecake mm -hmm. um, for a dinner party. I'd advertised to some of my, my, my colleagues how great it's going to be. I forget the menu. The menu might have been some like scallops and I think we were doing some steak and red wine sauce and some plethora of vegetables. Uh, cheese and biscuits and this amazing cheesecake that I told everyone was going to be fabulous and I think the guests were coming at half past seven I was in the local waitrose at quarter to seven looking for a cheesecake that matched my menu <laughs> uh, that's good that's good you're still trying that's good yeah. so, I know you talked about music heavy metal but if we play a song if you, if you play a song every time you enter a meeting room or or your or your home what would be that song? Ooh, another good question, Basker. I'll probably say to you, uh, Riff Raff. It's a track by ACDC. And it doesn't mean Riff Raff in terms of, of, a, of a, a derogatory term to, to associate to people. Mm -hmm. It means it's a song about not taking life too seriously. Mm. It's a song about taking what you do seriously, but not your life seriously. And I, I've kind of taken that philosophy with me. I've, I've worked hard on my career. I worked hard on my learning, but at the same time, I do not take myself too seriously. Nice. And it's quite inspirational. It always makes me think, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go and do some cool stuff today with people. If, uh, if you want to get something out of Jeremy, please do play songs. He'll give you whatever you ask him for. <laughs> Folks won't know that song anyway. But <laughs> yeah. oh, that's good. That's good. So, um, again, a fun one. If we were to play hide and seek right now, where would you hide? Where would I hide? Ah, well, probably under a large tree that has fallen down in my, my back garden. Okay, so that's going to be hard to find. So what was the 
last thing you watched on TV and was there any reason you did you choose to watch or it just it was just ah. Oh well, I've just been watching uh, Anatomy of a Scandal. Mm. Don't know. If, I think I think people may well have been watching that. It's been a big rave on Netflix. Mm. It's about a minister who has um, is, is accused of of indecent assault on one of his employees. It's a brilliant court drama, really well put together. When it comes to scandals and conspiracies. What is your favorite conspiracy theory or a scandal that that you thought you know what that could be true? Oh, John F. Kennedy, oh. be, the magic bullet. I mean, what? How does that magic bullet go? Do so much in the air and, and also throughout John F. Kennedy's body. I think that's for me is the biggest scandal. I won't say anything what I think actually happened, or whether the FBI were involved or not. Interesting. I think that's a fair point. I mean, like uh, you know, every time and the amount of. Um, you know stuff that comes out of it and um, even the titanics and the 9-11s and other things all oh, there was i it's fascinating i mean like uh, is it true or is it untrue or as they recently call it it's an alternative truth if that's how we call lie these days <laughs> well basket maybe we're, we're floating through time and space in multiverses mm. you know may, may, maybe one person's truth is another person's reality is another person's fantasy it's well, it's well said, well said. Uh, that's very important. That, that just takes us to the next question, which is, would you rather time travel to the past or to the future? Ooh, I've always thought about this question. I'd love to go back to, to, to maybe watch the ancient Egyptians build the pyramids, or I'd love to go and spend a little time in Henry the court, Henry VIII's court and just see what was going on with his wives. But I think I'm a big fan of, of a sci-fi series called Dune. They just made a, a movie through Villeneuve uh, a few months back, which has been extraordinarily successful. June was written in 1961 by Frank Herbert. Mm. His son subsequently, uh, um, Brian Herbert, along with Kevin G. Anderson, have written a number of prequels and completed his dad's work. June is, is probably the best-selling sci-fi novel of all time. So for me, I would love to go into the future. I'd like to go at least 10,000 years. I'd love to see what the world looks like in 10, in 10,000 years' time. I'm pretty certain that we, by then, will recognise that interstellar galactic travel is possible. Mm. And we what we all intuitively know will be true. We are not alone, Basker. I was just about to ask you, do you believe aliens are real? And you answered the question already, which is good. Um, I, no question. No question. I, I think, you know whether it's intelligence life that we know it in, in terms of the parameters of our definition might be questionable, but yes, I do believe that we're not alone. The, the, the universe is so vast. It's so big. Mm. I remember as a boy, we, we, you know, we, we were alone, weren't we? We didn't know much more about, we didn't know the dimensions of the Milky way, mm. a galaxy we live in. Now we know there are billions of galaxies. Now we know the size of the Milky way, a hundred thousand light years across 10,000 light years deep, 2 billion stars. And where they get these numbers from? It's just ridiculous, Basker. <laughs> I think, yeah, you do read a lot. And you, as you always said, Jeremy, you are here where you are because of your curiosity. And that's the thing which I, which I like people to do. Don't just restrict yourself with what you know. Keep your hobbies, interests, always learn more because you never know where that will be useful. Yeah. That's, so this is a very big question, which my son asked me yesterday. Daddy, do we need to put milk before cereals or cereals before milk? What do you think, Jeremy? Ah, your son's got, no, that's a really probing question. I'm, I'm going to go for cereals. And I say that because at, at least you can get some nutrition and a, a range of different vitamins if you've got to eat the cereal without the milk. Right, that's good. So cereal before milk, nice. Yeah. So what's the nickname that your friends have given you and what does it mean? Well, so I can ask you a question. What did your son, how did your son answer that question? No, he said that he normally puts cereals first, then he add the milk on top. Ah, okay. But he always sees me adding first milk and then put the cereals. In some cases, I even warmed it up. <laughs> and so, ah, well, well, I misinterpreted that question. Like, yeah, well, for me, definitely cereal and then milk. Absolutely. Every time. Sorry, um, sorry. What nicknames uh, do, my, do you remember Lord Lucan? Lord Lucan, yeah. Yeah, well, they call me Lucan. <laughs> okay, let's not, let's hop there. We don't need to get, we have an opening conversation. Ah, the only, the, the only talk called me that because Often they say, I, I will disappear. I won't contact them for weeks on end, and then suddenly I'll reappear. That's the reason why they call me that. Interesting, interesting. Have you ever sent a text message to a wrong person? And how did the pan out? Ooh, yeah, I did. Yeah, 
I sent a WhatsApp message by by mistake. Um, I actually sent the WhatsApp message to to my my, uh, to my wife, and I meant to send it to my mates about what time I was going to meet them in the pub. <laughs> when I told I told uh, Jackie, yeah, actually I'm going to be doing a work to, bit of work tonight. <laughs> so I was going watching the football. So how did that pan out? Fortunately for me, Jackie's quite understanding. So so. <laughs> She said, I'm sure you didn't mean this for me, Jeremy. So well, you're right, I didn't. She did it at the right time. Do you remember, Jeremy, you told me something and you did something, you know, it will come back one day, but uh, obviously that's a good one. So what was the last gift you gave someone? Uh, probably probably to my daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, she, she finished a master's degree from Lancaster University a year or so back. Um, she's been living in Lancaster, like I guess most young folks. She struggled to find to find you know good work mm-hmm. uh, 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 during the pandemic. So um, I've helped her out, and I've paid for a, for a rent for six months. So that's the last gift I've given anybody um, to, to just to help her, you know, keep keep her going, keep her motivated, keep her you know fully supported. Oh, and and, and I guess I'm, I've been fortunate to be able to do that, and I, and I consider myself in my entire life to be fortunate, Basker in terms of what I've been able to do and and, and achieve and, and the people that I've met as well. Totally, I think that nicely takes us to our gratitude round. Jeremy, I think, talk us through who are the people who have been the most influential in your life and career? Um, I probably would say firstly my mum, and I only say that because my mum, my mum lived a really simple life. She she was a housewife for most of her career until she had to go back to work to help me get through college and university. Mm. But uh, my mum's philosophy was, you know, uh, champagne lifestyle, lemonade pockets, mm. kind of what she did. She she liked her friends, um, but she was a great believer. Of what will be will be. Don't mm. don't don't sort of overthink. Life is is. A series of obstacles and challenges they are there to help you improve to experience challenges and obstacles and challenge yourself to overcome them never get fed up about it that's just the nature of life so my mum because of her simplicity and um, in, in terms of career and work i, I was lucky to meet uh, a couple of folks one, one guy was called martin stevens uh, who, who was with no web you know he, he saw potential in me Mm-hmm. and he, he encouraged me to take up new jobs, new opportunities. He supported me with advice and help and with a network of other people around me to help me develop. I wouldn't say it was that silent mentor in the background. I've never had somebody like that, but he was without doubt a guy that really shaped and influenced me in terms of choosing to go into facilities management mm-hmm. and learning in, in that facilities management journey. Mm-hmm. And then there was another chap called Pat McCloskey who passed away a few years ago, but Pat brought with him that influence on me around how to understand people, mm. how to tap into my emotional intelligence, how to work and support and help others. And, and, and I've taken from Pat that belief. I, I love to see people succeed, Basker. Mm. And I, I've been lucky. I've coached a few people and, I, and I've mentored some people in my career. And I've been delighted to see them succeed. And that played a little teeny small part in, in their success. And, and Pat, who was a, an ex-Tarmac uh, board director, really helped me understand how to work with other people and how to understand others. So th- 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 those three folks, really. And I guess there, there are two other people I'll mention. I'm a big fan of, of American business guru, Tom Peters. Mm-hmm. I love Tom Peters. I, I, I've seen him a couple of times talk and speak. And I think I love his creativity. I love his energy. I love his inspiration. I love the fact that he is one of those people, whatever you dream you can be, with hard work, with a good work ethic, with determination. And that's important. Determination, hard work, support, curiosity. You can achieve whatever you wish to be. And then probably it would be remiss of me not to talk about one of my sporting icons, uh, who, who again, unfortunately, another person that's passed away, but but the, the late and great Severiano Ballesteros, mm-hmm. as a golfer, to come from such humble beginnings to take on the world and to lead the European charge in terms of putting European golf back onto the map. Mm-hmm. Charismatic, swashbuckling, brilliant, self-taught, another another inspirational character, able to rise from the ashes to conquer the world. 
such an inspirational people within your life, uh, you know, mom, colleagues, and also external um, Tom Peters and uh, the golfing legends and others. So thank, thank you for doing that. Um, within your family, I mean, like, who's the most kindest person you know? In my family, probably, well, my wife, really. Yeah, my, my wife's been, uh, she, she's been a rock. Mm. She's been an inspiration. She illuminates every room that she walks into with an infectious smile. Mm. And she makes people feel, no matter, no matter where a person is in, 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 in the cycle of life mm. or in the hierarchy of life, she makes people feel really, really special. So mm. I think she's extraordinarily kind and it's a gift that not many people have. Totally. I think I, I was, uh, was hoping you would say that answer. <laughs> and I'm glad you did. Nice, nice, Jeremy. So, uh, Jeremy, I think um, we talked about people in your life and career, also the kindest person. And as you remember, we are in this COVID time. So, obviously, there are certain things within your company or within your locality, in your neighborhood, someone might have inspired on a different level altogether just to help the community or help have gone beyond in their jobs and stuff. Anything comes to your mind? But someone supported the community. Someone supported the community or something you read that really touched your thing or uh, somebody within your team, you know, who went on to do anything that, that reminds you in this two years of uh, COVID or two and a half years of COVID, which is still coming out. Uh, any stories that reminded you that people are kind? Oh, gosh. I mean, the, 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 there are so many that it would be remiss to, to name just one person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen all kinds of acts of kindness from in our local community here. When we first went into lockdown, mm. the shelves were empty. Mm. Uh, you couldn't get hold of food. People had stockpiled for a whole host of different reasons. But one or two of our local uh, farming groups, they just put up shacks in, in down the streets and they left honesty boxes and they put vegetables out for people to go and pick up, which I thought was, you know, tremendous given that, you know, their industry was being savaged, mm. uh, which I thought was nice. We, we had some of our local restaurateurs around the area, and there are not many, that, that started to, to, you know, create click and correct options for people to do. Uh, we're discounting a lot, of, a lot of the foods as well, so, you know, it was making it more affordable for people. Um, and then I've, I've seen, I think, and I mentioned this, I've mentioned this a few times before, Basco, when we spoke, I really think that the new pandemic is the homeless that we see on our streets of Britain which, which just breaks my heart every day. And mm. I see that and, it, and it's everywhere. It's not just in London and Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Newcastle. It's in small towns as well. I, I forget the numbers now. What are we, nearly 300,000 folks that are, are living on our streets, li living rough and are genuinely homeless. Mm. Well, many of which have got mental health related problems. But I've seen so many people now not give money, but go and buy these folks food and drinks and, you know, really helping them. And, and, and for me, that's a that's superb acts of kindness. Mm. But if I think about one person in particular that I've seen do something, it's not just an act of kindness because I think your first question was done something remarkable mm. and has been an inspiration to others. Um, I choose words carefully because, you know, I'm a big believer that you need to be whoever you are. Mm. You need to be free to be the person that you are and the person that you want to be without any fear of any kind of recrimination. But one of, one, of, one of my employees, one of my managers, a lady called Kirsty, Kirsty Lila, um, she's inspiring now people to, to become fitter, shall we say, and to lose, to lose weight, to, be, to, become, to have a healthier weight and a healthier lifestyle. And, and I, I forget the, the exact numbers, but she's lost about 80 pounds wow. over the last couple of years. And she's shown me pictures and she's shown me like how much more confident she is now how much better she feels about herself, how better her health and well-being is. And she's inspiring other people with her story. She's mm. written some magazines and she's got some workshops and things she runs with other people to really mm. help and encourage people. Three different spectrums. You, thank you thank you that was really useful so as, as we come to the future so uh, i know you already shared uh, certain aspects of the best advice that you received uh, uh, just summarize them what's the best piece of advice that you have received and from whom and also what advice you would give to 
people who are looking to pursue a career similar to yours? It could be the same or it could be different. And um, okay, so I've thought long about this, about advice for others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my, 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 my guess is that most people out there have probably heard of, of Stephen Covey's seven or eight lessons for highly effective people, as the case might be. I can't remember. It's a bit like the four P's in marketing, the seven P's that they are now. But, but I think the advice I had was pretty similar to what, 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 what Covey talks about. You know, be proactive with your career. Mm. You know, take your career, your health, your well-being, your mental health and well-being, your learning and development. Take it seriously. Mm. You do not want to be 10, 15, 20 years time from now thinking, oh, my gosh, I wish I'd taken this opportunity. I wish I knew that. Mm. Take it seriously. Mm. But don't take life too seriously because it is a, a series of obstacles and successes and sometimes failures. And sometimes we've got to fail to learn to improve, to move forward. Don't mm. take it too seriously, but be proactive. I think that... Um, you should always, I say this to my kids all the time, what's the trajectory? Mm. Where are we going? Mm. You know, what are you trying to achieve? So sort of start with the end in mind, which is what Covey would say, and think about what that end might look like for you. And then I, I think a good piece of advice, particularly in the world we live in now, Basker, we've got WhatsApp, we've got Instagram, we've got MS Teams, we've got MS Clothes, we've got so many different devices for communication and mm. receiving working requests. I think you need to really think about personal management. Work on just work on what are the really important things. Don't let stuff become urgent. Mm. Don't work on stuff that's not important. Mm. Work on things that help you or help your business or help your career or help your objectives in your business. I would call it working on, on, on the thin end of thick. And that's really important. You know, don't, don't waste your time because as I've got older, I've recognized, you know, your, your time wheel accelerates by the time you hit 30 life is going and you've got children you're married if that's what you do um your life is accelerating at such a fast pace mm. you've got to make every second of every single day count mm. so don't be fed up every day is a school day and i think you know i would advise people in in the facilities management industry as i said a little bit earlier mm. qualify yourself mm. keep learning but i think you should network but network with purpose you know, drive intelligent conversations mm. with other people. And then, then finally, I think you need to be yourself. Mm. You know, be, I said that before, be who you are, not what others want you to be. And I think if you do that, you will have a, a healthy, mm. successful and happy life. What a beautiful, beautiful end. I think you know, it's, it's 100%, 100%. Every single word that you said, I'm sure the listeners will be taking that and I think that's important. Uh, also just to wrap up, because it's Bachi Talk FM after all, what's the one common myth about our profession, the FM profession that you want to debunk? We're not a bunch of cleaners, are we? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, yeah, we're not a bunch of cleaners. We're not just, uh, you know, electricians and, and folks. We're not, we're not the janitorial team. We're not the back office team. We're front and center of business. You know, we, we support organizations to become great. We support yeah. our clients, customers to succeed. Kind of what I, what I believe. Well said, well said, Jeremy. I think, you know, what, a, what an all-round uh, all episode. Jeremy, before we close the episode, is there any part of your life or career or is there anything else you would like to share before we close it? Also share what's your immediate plans? So what are you looking forward to in the immediate future? Um. In, in my immediate plans in the near future, I'd like to, we, we, we rebranded our business in February 2020, so six weeks before a lockdown, uh, in terms of creating a better world at work and bringing our best together to create a better world at work and repurposing some of our values and some of our product capabilities. Mm. So it's taken a long time for us to get that back on track. And I'm looking forward in the next two to three months to really nailing that down back into our business so that folks can see you know, what MCOR UK really stands for, what we're all about, and they can see our product capabilities and services and solutions to support our, our, our customers. So that's sort of my near-term focus. After that, well, Vasca, <laughs> the world is opening up so much. I think new challenges probably, you know, looking forward to what the future holds. 100%, Jim. I think everything will be well. You know, you have a big heart and uh, you are always positive. So thank you so much for joining today, Jeremy. It's been an absolute privilege to have you. 
wish you, your family, your colleagues, everybody at the MCOR and everybody whom you touch in ICW or, you know, you're, you're not being very popular. All the good health and happiness, continue to inspire us, continue to help people and stay healthy, stay happy, stay sane. And I will so looking forward to see you face to face very soon. Uh, Bashu, it's been my, Basu, it's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I've really, really enjoyed that. I hope that the listeners have taken a little bit away from what we've had to talk about this morning to, to help and develop their own personal careers and, and, and their lives in facilities management. And also to wish Bashu and your business every success in the future as well, Basket. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. To all our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Please do visit www.bachurain.com forward slash Talk FM podcast. To this specific episode link, to everything that was mentioned in this podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, review and share Bachi Talk FM podcast. We will see you at the next episode with another special guest. Until then, it's Baska Sundrum signing off. <laughs>